When you're working on a dream, at some point in time, a transition takes place. And the transition is, is what you are becoming in pursuit of the dream. Because even if you don't get the dream, you become such a strong and powerful person, it will so change your life, you can look at something else and say, well, I think I'll go do this then. Because you have now developed yourself in such confidence and such competence in how to deal in the arena of life that you can move into another area and not miss a beat. Once you begin to discover who you are, then you really realize how you have been given authority and dominion over everything on the face of the earth, including all the dimensions of your life. But you can only do that through the struggle of life. And most people avoid the struggle. Most people go through life avoiding pain. And when you go through life like that, something in you dies. Something in you that you never activate is lying dormant in there that you never get a chance to call on because you have not challenged yourself. Somebody said, the land of familiarity belongs to the dead. That most people like to feel like they're a king in the area of their comfort zone. They only want to do those things that they know how to do well. Osborne said, unless you attempt to do something beyond that which you've already mastered, you will never grow. So if you want to begin to grow, you've got to put something out here that you can't reach easily, that has got to make you stretch, got to make you jump for it, got to make you get back a little bit and dig in so that you can take a leap for it. And maybe you jump up there and you miss it and you skin your knees and you come back again and you bust your lip next time. But you keep on and through that process, you learn how to leap higher. You start challenging yourself to dig deeper and then you discover some things about you that you don't know right now. Some talents that you have in you that you didn't know that you can do. I started out just talking to kids and now I'm speaking at corporations. Now I'm traveling. I didn't know I can do this, but had I not given myself a chance, and I'm saying to you, give yourself a chance. Here's something else. If you want to begin to make your stuff happen for you, I think that it's very important that you start trusting yourself. Listen to yourself. Listen to that still small voice within you. Don't try and make everything logical. There are some things about life that defies logic, that you just can't explain how the outcome is going to be. That once you begin to trust yourself and your ideas and your instincts, life takes on a whole new meaning because now I want you to do that feeling that you are led. Just feel, I am led. I remember the worst speech I had ever given in my life. I let someone exploit a fear that I had. For years I had a tremendous inferiority complex because I'm not college educated. And this person knew this. And she said, let me write this speech for you. You're going to speak at Ohio State University. Those people are very educated there. And they're going to know when you make grammatical errors and they're going to know because of the substance of your speech that you are not literate. I, I care about you. I don't want you to embarrass yourself. So this person proceeded to write a speech for me. I had a speech in my mind. But this person was stronger than I was negatively than I was positive about my own thoughts. And I gave my power away. With my permission, I allowed this person to guide me to do something that I really didn't want to do. But I didn't feel enough inner strength and conviction about my skills as a speaker and the message that I had to bring to stick by my guns. And I got up there at the Ohio Union and I read this straight speech and did not move and did not take my eyes off the page because I'm not accustomed to reading. And after I finished, some people gave me a standing ovation because I read it extremely well and I was very tense and I was very nervous. Ladies and gentlemen, don't give your power away. You don't need anybody to approve your dream. It was given to you. If they can't see it, it's because it wasn't given to them. It was given to you. Hold it, nourish it, cultivate it, work on it. It's yours. It's your baby. Work on it until it comes into fruition. I gave away my power and I said, I'm not going to do that no more. Here's something else for those who make it today. Do what you know is right. Treat people like you want to be treated. Don't try and take any shortcuts. Don't try and cheat. 
Pay your dues up front. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, what goes around comes around. You can pay now or you will pay double later. So do the right thing. There might be a tendency sometimes because of the negative part of our consciousness and our own programming for us to want to say, well, I just do it this time. It won't matter. Won't nobody know. Ladies and gentlemen, everything matters. And you know you're somebody. You know. I'd rather lose out on my dream doing the right thing than the cheat trying to make a shortcut to get to my goal. I want to be able to look myself in the mirror. And that's what you want to do. There's no saying, judge a man not by what he does, but by that that he doesn't have to do. And to judge a true quality of a man is what do you do when nobody's looking. See, there's some good out there for you in the universe that has your name on it. And nobody can get your good. It has your name on it. They can't take your stuff. It's your stuff. So when you know that, when you know that whatever you're seeking, it's also seeking you. You don't worry. You don't run scared. You don't think somebody's going to take it from you. You listen to your inner voice and you always take the high road. There will be the tendency, the natural inclination to take the low road. You must resist that. Here's something else I encourage you to do if you want to make it today. Keep your agreements. Keep your agreements that you make and establish a network of people who will also do that. Establish a network of people in your life that you can count on, that will be there for you when you need them, and you be there for them. Here's the other thing is you're working on your dream. A lot of people have been calling me saying, hey, man, I read about you in Ebony. Boy, you're lucky. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. Here's something else. Three P's to have in your life. And working on your dream and doing your life work, you must be patient, persistent, and positive no matter what. I called John H. Johnson for two and a half years to get in that magazine. The first time I called him, he wouldn't talk to me. Then I was persistent, trying to find out who knew him that could invite me there to meet him or an opportunity to speak so that he could hear me. And I met a guy who worked for him. And I said, hey, I'd like to speak for you guys free. I just want to know, will he be in the audience? They said, yes, good. I spoke and I tried to tear the microphone up. <laughs> and he said after I finished, hey, young man, you're quite impressive. I'm going to have my staff do an article on you. I said, thank you, Mr. Johnson. And I sent him information on me, Federal Express. And it didn't happen. Waited for a month and it didn't happen. Waited for two months. It didn't happen. I stopped calling. Every month. Hello. How are you, man? Speak to Mr. Johnson. I'm sorry he's not available. Tell him Les Brown calling. I just want to say thank you very much for the article when he puts it in. I kept on doing it, kept on calling, kept on calling, sending new articles, sending new information on me, kept on upgrading the information on me, sending him thank you letters, thank you, Mr. Johnson. I was always positive. I could have gotten negative saying, where did you lie to me? Why are you going to tell me you're going to put me in the magazine and you didn't do it? I could have got an attitude, be positive no matter what, because when you are negative, ladies and gentlemen, you're sending out negative energy and you're blocking your good. So don't send out any negative energy. Don't take it personal. I didn't care what he thought of me or the staff that I was a nuisance to them. They get paid to deal with people like me. <laughs> See, a lot of people have an idea or a dream and they give up on it. No, no, don't do that. Work your dream until it get hot. See, most things don't happen as soon as we think they should happen. The messenger of misery might drop in on you and say hello. Murphy's Law might come by and thump you on the head. <laughs> Any number of things can happen to interrupt your flow. It's okay. Don't take it personal. Just acknowledge what's going on. It's called life. And keep on working on your dream. Continue to keep on knocking. Keep on knocking. Because this is your life. This is what you love. This is your passion. Step back. Don't judge it. If you judge it, judge not yet, lest ye be judged. Why? Because when you judge it, you invest emotion in it. And that mo emotion could be anger. And guess what? That hurts you. That doesn't hurt anybody else. One doctor said, the man who angers me killeth me. 
And then he allowed someone to egg him into an argument on the floor of the National Medical Convention and suffered a massive heart attack. When you're in a state of anger, you have so much acid in your blood, if they withdrew some blood from you and inserted it into a pig, it would die from the acid. So what do you want to take yourself out early for by internalizing things? Shakespeare said, nothing is neither good nor bad, but thinking makes it so. So judge not according to appearances, but write judgment and feel that everything is going to work out for you because you're patient, you're persistent, and you're going to be positive no matter what. Don't allow other things or people or circumstances to determine what your reaction is going to be. I was out to dinner with some people and we had a waitress that was quite discourteous and rude. And the people around me took a, an attitude about it. I learned how to observe life. I think that in order to overcome life, you've got to learn how to observe it. Just stand back and watch what's going on and choose not to buy into it. I said, excuse me, ma'am. I said, do you know what TIP stands for? <laughs> she said, no. I said, TIP stands for to ensure promptness. We've been sitting here a long time. I want to give you $5 up front to ensure a prompt meal. Would you assist me? She gave me the biggest smile and said, oh, of course I will. <laughs> And I said, by the way, I'm not with these people. I'm going to be sitting at another table. Please put my meal over there. Serve them by themselves. <laughs> See, I don't want to make anybody angry who goes behind closed doors to prepare my food. <laughs> oh, no. So don't allow people to determine how you are going to respond to them or circumstances. Learn to look at it. A friend of mine, Tom Perkins, handsome, articulate man in his mid-fifties. He had a tremendous business and at the height of his success, someone was killed in his business. He was sued and lost $750,000. Lost his business, lost his family, lost his home, everything. He was devastated, ladies and gentlemen. He started living in his car. He would wash up in a McDonald's across from Howard University on Georgia Avenue in Washington, D.C. He said, Les, I was so depressed. He said, I had everything and then one day I lost it all. He said, I didn't want to live anymore. He got some sleeping pills and he took over 35 sleeping pills and he laid down, folded his hands across his chest and he said he went to sleep to die. Two days later, much to his amazement, he woke up. He couldn't even get that right. I said, what happened then, Tom? He said, an incredible thing happened. He said, he was laying there for a moment. He said, and a voice said to him inside his mind, it wasn't your life to take. That was one thing. He said, since that day, when I get any major challenges, I don't take it on myself personally. I feel that I've got somebody with me. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, hey, I said, God, you got to handle this for me. This is too much for me. He said, I don't sweat the challenges of life. Repeat out to me, please. Don't sweat the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. Because it's all small stuff. <laughs> <laughs> See, whatever you're worried about, if someone called call you right now and say, listen, you got two days to live, I'm telling you, you won't be worried about your bills, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you won't be worried about whether or not somebody loves you or cheating on you <laughs> because you're about to check out. <laughs> okay? So put things in perspective. Here's something else Tommy said that I think is important. He said that the voice also said to him, if you change your ways, I'll give you far more than you ever lost. Look at your life right now. If you want to keep on getting what you're getting, keep on doing what you're doing. You've got to be willing to change your ways. Your life is working. If you don't like what you have produced, you are director, you are the star, you wrote this script. You produce this, whatever it is. If it's a hit, you produced it. If it's a flop, you produced it. Take ownership of it and decide to go back to the drawing board and rewrite the script that you are the star of. 
You have the power to do that. On this day, you can declare that I'm going to change. As you look back on your life, you can decide that I don't like what I produced here and I want higher ground. I want to begin to experience more love. I want to have more adventure in my life. I want something that gives my life a sense of meaning. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been selected to head up a program called Project Life in Chicago, training thousands of kids. And I had the experience, This we had our second session this past Monday. And to see these young people when they came in, and to see the young people and the parents and the community volunteers when they went out. One young man from the Cabrini Green Housing Projects who didn't want to be there, who came up and said, I want you to know I'm so glad to be here. And he said, I'll never be the same again. He said, thank you, Mr. Brown. He said, I just got to go now, but thank you, sir. I'll never be the same again. To see a letter I got from a young man who was in the Cook County Jail where I work on Monday morning. And this young man will not be out of jail for at least 50 years. At least 50 years. They gave him 100 years. This guy has shot at least 60 people that we know of and killed 10 at least. And this letter he wrote, he said, since listening to your tapes, he said, I have not changed, but I feel a different person in me. Over 70% of these young men are in there for murder. We wanted to have a two-prone attack where we would train people on the outside and train those that are in the jails because I believe if you cage them like animals and treat them like animals and they're out on the streets every 22 months, they're going to get out and act like animals and go back in like animals. So we said, let's take an approach. This gives me my life. This, now this might be insane. But I felt so good, I believe, ladies and gentlemen, if we can accept the possibility of that this is the decade of consciousness. That's what I believe that this is. The decade of consciousness, if you please. A time where we can begin to create in folks' minds the idea, the possibility that we can create a more humane society, the possibility that we can create more love, communication, and understanding in relationships, the possibility that we can create the kind of respect for diversity and difference in our multicultural society, the possibility that we can begin to develop the mindset to bring out the best in people, to encourage them to achieve their greatness and support them in their dreams, that if we can, in this decade of consciousness, to begin to see and envision that happening and that we all can play a role. That we were born for such a time as this. That we showed up for this. That we survived one out of nine million sperms and we have been chosen for this great work. Here's something else to recognize. Wherever you are on the ladder of life, and I was reading in Dr. Norman Vincent Peale's latest book called The Power of Positive Living, which I think is his greatest work. And he has something in there, a section called Comeback Power. Wherever you are in life, ladies and gentlemen, you've got comeback power. I don't care how low you are. I don't care what you have done. I don't care what you have experienced. I don't care how devastated your life might appear to be. The shambles it might be in. There's a power in you that can enable you to be stronger and better than anything that's out here. One man who came to the training, he was not a kid. And I knew he had a drinking problem and he was looking at me and I can smell alcohol on him. I said, excuse me, come here, come here, come here. He said, what is it? I said, let me tell you something. I want you to know you've got something in you that's stronger than that poison you're putting in your body. Do you understand me? And he was looking, he was backing up. He said, he said, no. Uh, uh, no, no. He said, I, I, I don't know, man. I said, it is. I said, that's why you're here. Something drew you here. And that which caused you to come, you said you want some help. And you need to be around some people that can help you get in touch with your power because you know that your life deserves this. See, I think that the reason that we abuse ourselves with drugs and alcohol is that we're trying to numb something in us that's, that's aching us, that's, that's urging us, that's nagging us to do something bigger and better. It can't be because it tastes so good. But when we are deluding ourselves or polluting our minds, it numbs us where we don't have to face reality. 
Because we don't know what we've got going for us. See, once you discover who you are, the truth of knowing who you are will set you free from ever wanting alcohol, from ever wanting any kind of drug that's going to destroy who you are. Once you begin to know who you are, it will set you free from believing, I can't see myself doing any better. Once you discover this power, this, the perfect essence of who you are that's in all of us, that's permeating our being, that enable us to be the directors of our lives,